Welcome to the May edition of Shaker Life. This month on Shaker Life, we'll continue our coverage of Shaker's 75th anniversary events. You'll get a glimpse into the past when Dick Cliver of the Shaker Heights Historical Society discusses Shaker furniture. Some Shaker teens will reflect back and show you what life was like for a teenager growing up in 1912 in Shaker Heights. Then we'll switch gears and look to the future. We'll investigate the city's plans for Shaker Town Center, the Van Aken Project, the East Suburban Council on Open Communities, and the Fund for the Future for Shaker Heights. We'll also show you highlights of the health fair that was held here in April at the Shaker Middle School. And coming up next, you'll hear from Ruthie Brown and Jan Devereaux from the Shaker Heights League of Women Voters. Today, I'm talking with Jan Devereaux, who chairs the League of Women Voters study on meeting basic human needs. Jan, I understand that the Shaker Heights League of Women Voters is involved in a study of welfare and assistance programs. Exactly what are you studying? The Shaker League is studying four areas of basic human need. Uh, hunger, food, access to health care, and income assistance. And what we're doing is trying to determine whose responsibility these services are, the private sector, the public sector, what kind of programs are available, who avails, who uses the programs, uh, are there any kind of uh, changes needed. Uh, that, that's the basic structure of the, of the study. Jan, what kinds of programs do we have in the city of Shaker Heights and how many people use them? First of all, I, I think that we need to recognize that Shaker is a very diverse community. It's a diverse community economically and in many ways. Uh, I think it's an interesting statistic to note that about the same number in Shaker, about the same number of people make um, uh, under $15,000 as make over $50,000 a year. It's about 22 or 23 percent. So um, it's a very diverse community. It's not just strictly a wealthy community. In terms of the number of poverty uh, households, there are about 12,800 households in Shaker Heights, and about 4% of them, about 500 of them, would be classified as poverty level households. Uh, the median apartment rent for the mo for per month is about $350. So Shaker is quite a diverse community. As to what services are offered and what kinds of things uh, people take advantage of. Um, I think that uh, our viewers would be interested to know that about 800 people in Shaker Heights were on public assistance in December of 1986. And that's about a 15 percent increase over uh, the year before. Uh, in the same vein, um, about 1,000 people in Shaker, and Shaker is a community of about 32,000, um, received food stamps in that same period of time. And, and again, that was an increase of about 15 percent over the year before. Um, other kinds of, of services that we offer in Shaker Heights, there's a, a, a surplus food distribution. Um, there's a daily luncheon um, at one of the churches where people can go if, if uh, there's a suggested donation of 75 cents, but if you can't afford it, you don't need to pay that. Um, some of the institutions, like churches, do remarkable things in terms of serving people in the community. The Shaker Community Church, which serves Shaker and uh, Warrensville Heights, last year served 7,000 days of food uh, to about 8,000 people in the Shaker-Warrensville Heights area. So there are a number of things, a number of programs that people are availing themselves of, and, and I think we in Shaker Heights really aren't aware of it. I realize this is phase one of a two-year study. What impact do you think this study will have on the city of Shaker Heights? First of all, we will be keeping the community informed as we proceed along the way with the study over the next two years. I think the impact is that by disseminating information out into the community that people will become more aware of the fact that although there's not a lot of poverty in Shaker Heights, there is poverty. and. It will help to raise the sensitivity level of the community uh, to the poverty that exists within our borders. Thank you, Jan. This is Ruthie Brown for Shaker Life. The religious group, the Shakers, have left our community with a rich and interesting history. 
and part of their legacy is Shaker furniture. Here is Dick Cliver from the Shaker Heights Historical Museum. The Shaker Historical Museum of Shaker Heights contains the largest and most diversified collection of Shaker furniture in the state of Ohio, much of it from the local Shaker colony of North Union, which once occupied this area. Shaker furniture has gained a worldwide reputation for its beauty of form, its simplicity, and its utility. And it was the inspiration for Danish modern. This sewing table with its simple kidney-shaped top and convenient inlaid yardstick is built so that it can be folded up to save space. A candle stand which derives its beauty not from any ornamentation but from its simple and graceful lines. The Shaker concept of utility is well illustrated by this cradle with the rung on the side enabling a shaker sister to rock the cradle with her feet, thus freeing her hands for sewing or knitting. The shakers were pioneers in the chair industry, selling many to the outside world. Ladder backs were produced in many sizes. They certainly made one sit up straight. Rocking chairs were commonly used by the old and infirm, along with this unusual footstool with legs of unequal length. What you see here is not a love seat, but a useful double wagon chair. They even made children's high chairs for their adopted children. Some North Union child used this one. All Shaker chairs were light in weight, but very strong and built to last. Some of the most beautiful Shaker furniture is seen in their chests. This is a high boy and considered to be one of the finest examples of its kind in any museum. When the Shakers left North Union in 1889, they held an auction to dispose of many items. One was this chest with a top of curly maple. Pegboards were found in every Shaker room, always six feet from the floor. On this particular one hangs a sconce for a candle holder. It can be raised or lowered. They were, of course, used for hanging hats and clothes, and even chairs, while the floor was being swept. This chair is hanging upside down so the dust cannot settle on the top of the seat. In the dining room of the center family dwelling of North Union, the dishes were kept in this cupboard. It is made of black walnut and there are no nails, only wooden pegs. Also from North Union is this corner cabinet. The mailbox shown here came from the Enfield, Connecticut colony, having been used by the trustees, elders, and deacons. Oval boxes were widely used by Shaker sisters for their sewing supplies and herbs. They came in many sizes. The folk song, Pop Goes the Weasel, is based on this yarn winder or weasel, which has a clock-like device that makes a popping sound after 40 revolutions to inform the spinner one skein of thread has been completed. Perhaps simplicity is best exemplified by this tall clock almost austere in appearance, in stark contrast to the highly ornamental grandfather clocks of today. All the Shaker furniture is in keeping with the familiar Shaker song. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come right down to where we ought to be. I'm Dick Cliver from the Shaker Historical Society. The city of Shaker Heights was incorporated in the year 1912. Shelley Gibson and company reflect back on what life was all about here in Shaker 75 years ago. Shelly, Carol, why don't you meet the new guy, Tuck. Hi, Tuck. Hi, Tuck. Hi. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, Pete, did you win your game last night? Sure did. Beat Chagrin by 29. 29. Hmm. Well, Pete, you played a great game, but uh, your socks kept falling down. 
<laughs> well, Carol, I can't always be fashionable like you. But you can keep trying. No, that's true. So, Shelly, you missed another one of our games last night. Off fighting for another one of your causes. What was it this time? Equal rights for... Cut it out. I was working on my college applications. Oh. So, Tuck, how do you feel about Chick Heights so far? I tell you, Carol, it's been great. Every day something new and exciting happens to me. Just yesterday, I was thinking about what a wonderful rapid transit system we have here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I asked. Well, Tuck, you know we pride ourselves on being the best here in Shaker Heights and only the movers and the shakers. That's why I was not here. Speaking of moving, I gotta get moving on that Shaker anniversary project that's due next week. I guess Beachwood Mall's out of the question tonight, huh, Carol? What do you know about 1912? Well, let me think. Uh, Woodrow Wilson was elected president. New Mexico became a part of the United States. The South Pole was discovered. And the Titanic sunk. Okay, I know something about 1912. Huh. The year they legalized Sunday baseball. I figured you'd know that. I think we just all need to hit the library. Hey, wait a minute. In the attic, we our new house. There are all these old boxes my mom wants me to sort through. It's old stuff like pictures, newspapers, magazines, that kind of stuff. I don't know. They might be of some help to us. Us? D did he say us? Yeah, us. us. <laughs> That's it. That's the ticket. No way. There's a moonlight sale at Beachwood Mall tonight. I can't miss it. There's no way. Come on, girl. Carol, this is more important than Beachwood Mall. Carol, you and I have got to have a talk about your priorities. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> there are more important things in life than shopping. I think you pick me up a sweatshirt. Busy day. I've had to pack my Okay, guys and gals, you ready for some hits from the past? They're oldies but goodies. They're nuggets, because you dug it. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the hits of 1912. Yeah. so silly. I need some more songs. Oh, there's some great songs from back then, like My Wild Irish Rose. I've heard of that one. Oh yeah, how about these? Teddy Bear's Picnic, and uh, let's see, Yankee Doodle Come to Town. Hey, here's a list of some more songs from 1912. Casey Jones, Memphis Blues, Under the Old Apple Tree, Enchantress. In the back of this old picture, it says the first school was built in 1912. Four teachers and I know what it means to me. It'd be virtually impossible to skip class. Everyone would notice. You know, I just read in Friday, Friday's newsletter that uh, the enrollment at Shaker High is a little over 1900 this year. Gosh, this is a girl. This is a picture of the first high school student. It was a girl. She was the only one. Can you imagine that? No dates, no boyfriends. Yeah, but Carol, look at the bright side. Yeah. She was both prom queen and valedictorian. But um, bum. Hey, how about this? It says here the most of Shaker streets were named by H. C. Gallimore, and it says he used English places and novels to name the streets. You know. I'm finding some really good stuff here. Wow, look at these fashions from 1912. Look at his hat. Look at her dress. And her hair. Oh, God. I just think how styles have changed. That makes you wonder what the, what it'll be like in the future. I bet I'll be able to do all my shopping for my home video system. Yep, and no till farming. Hey, hey! <laughs> yeah, the no-till farming. We've looked at our past, now let's look to our future. As citizens discuss plans for the Shaker Town Center, ESCOC, the Van Aken Project, and the Fund for the Future for Shaker Heights. David Goss headed the Citizens Committee which studied Shaker Town Center. This study revealed several basic facts about the commercial area. The area through the years has undergone piecemeal development and therefore lacks a cohesive focus as a commercial area. There have been many economic studies done on Shaker Town Center, but most strategies have been stopgap measures. The area has no focus or image and the store mix is fragmented. The area has little visual appeal and parking is a major problem. There are no anchor stores, no centralized management or ownership. The existing auto dealerships are the major economic strength in Shaker Town Center and there is a strong interest to establish an auto mile in the area by existing firms and some outside the area. High density, moderate price housing exists in the area and housing developers contacted saw little potential for competitive housing development projects except possibly in the area of senior housing. There is office space, but current Chagrin Boulevard office complex developments prevents much potential for development in Shaker Town Center. The committee came up with the following strategy for the area. But our first recommendation was that the area here in the northeast quadrant, which is 
right in here should be basically come, become a convenient retail center and that it should be started from scratch and be built from new about 100,000 square feet. That would take about 10 acres in that particular area. And what it would do is make it into a contemporary convenience center by having a, uh, a shopping or a, a grocery store that had at least 40,000 square feet. You probably have 40,000 square feet today, but it's in three different locations uh, throughout the Shaker Town Square area. You need at least a 10 to 15,000 square foot uh, drugstore and other types of convenience retail and the general model today that are occurring around the community and other urban areas is about 100,000 square feet. So we felt that that was going to be an important component of what was necessary to kick off a major change in the image and the vitality of the retail in a particular area. Secondly, we felt we needed to reestablish the uh, the strong automobile usage in the area, and we wanted to focus that on this particular corner. This is the uh, southwest quadrant. About the time that we got into this project, I think most of you are aware that the city a few years ago bought the theater property here on the corner, and had been gone through a, a fairly extensive process, and had just awarded the, uh, the uh, potential use of this land here on this quadrant to Blaushield Chevrolet, which was across the street, and they were going to move over here. It was as part of our activity when we were doing the automobile subcommittee that we had all the automobile dealers in together talking with each other, that the concept started to come around of an automobile mall, which, is, which was a new concept that was being tested out in California, where you would have a structure on this corner that would have all the showrooms of all the dealers in the area and have them in one location so that when people were looking for a car, they could come to one spot and see all, well, in this case, we have four dealers, four dealers, cars in the same spot. It's a whole new concept of marketing automobiles. Eric Blaushield uh, felt that that was worth uh, exploring. And for the last six months, those automobile dealers are trying to figure out how to make that happen. It's a very high risk project. There's no guarantee that it'll work. It really changes basically the character and the scope of the building that would go on that corner, but it would be a whole new concept for the whole county. We think it would be a very important step, and they are now working with the city, and hopefully we can find a way to economically justify putting that structure on this corner, a brand new building, uh, again, contemporary in style, that would match some of the things that were going to happen in retail, and really have a viable image of something's really happening in this area. And that the land that is currently used for the dealerships along Lee Road would be primarily there for the uh, maintenance activities and possibly some used, used car activities. But the new car sales function would be up in this corner. The third record element that we had was what we called provide for some facilities which have regional retail uh, possibilities, and this, these would occur longer range, and these would occur primarily based on whether or not this particular thing was successful. There are certain uses that are regional in nature, like restaurants, possibly auto supply stores, apparel shops, things that people go to occasionally that we feel could be developed in this area, primarily a spin off of this up in this corridor, or in this quadrant, also down here on the uh, south East Quadrant. The Shaker Town Center Citizens Committee also recommended that the library remain in the area, that residential housing was an integral part of the plan, and that standards of maintenance be strictly enforced. The committee also recommended that the city of Shaker Heights take a role in assembling the land and creating an economic environment that would attract developers. It was recommended that the city establish an entity to manage and implement these plans. Phil Heinzelman, Shaker Heights City Planner, then updated citizens on the Van Aken Project. The Van Aken Project is a plan to build two office towers over the Van Aken Rapid Stop at Warrensville. In phase one of the plan, the RTA stop would be put under cover. A 450-car parking garage would be built, as well as one 300,000-square-foot office tower. Connections, both pedestrian and vehicular, would be made between the current two shopping malls and the office building complex with current traffic down the Van Aken Boulevard being closed off.
Phase two would entail building more parking and a second office tower. The office building would have a significant positive impact on our tax base. Winston Ritchie then discussed Shaker's charter membership role in the ESCOC agency, or the East Suburban Council on Open Communities. What we are trying to do with the East Suburban Council is expand the options of black buyers to include those areas where they don't uh, usually look. Historically, when blacks look for homes, they look in Shaker Heights, Cleveland Heights, Warrensville, East Cleveland, and um, they don't know anything about uh, the areas where we are. Uh, our methods, we work very closely with real estate agents, uh, both black and white. We thought we would have much more success with the black agents than we've had to date, but uh, we have found that the black agents, in order to sell homes out in uh, Mayfield Heights and Richmond Heights, have to familiarize themselves with the community. They have to um, travel a little further to make their sales. Uh, it's, it's, it takes a little longer than a half a day to, to do that, whereas they can sell a home in Cleveland Heights and Shaker, they know the territory, uh, it's much easier for them. Besides that, they have listings in these areas where they don't have to split the commission. Anything they sell out in our neck of the woods, of course, uh, they probably don't have listings for and they have to split the commissions. We consult with black home seekers. Uh, this has been a real a real challenge for us to try to sell blacks on the idea of moving out into the other communities. I happen to live in Shaker, and all of a sudden I find myself trying to tell people what's better about Mayfield than Shaker. <laughs> um, there are some advantages to moving out into Mayfield, some of the areas there, and I'm reluctant to tell you what they are because I don't want to start an exodus. <laughs> but uh, things like taxes uh, are much less... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, schools are good out there, um, uh, resale value, uh, the demand on the part of blacks and whites for a long time in the future. There are reasons that we have uh, to try and um, encourage blacks to uh, at least look the area over. We don't try to limit people and say don't move here or do move there. What we like to do is to just open up the options. Say, why don't you look out here? And then you make up your mind yourself if you move into Shaker or East Cleveland or wherever, that's your choice. But at least be aware of what's available. The, uh, we like to see people look at houses like they look at automobiles, look at everything, make your choice based on what you see, and uh, don't be uh, restrained by where you think you can't move. The, uh, we work with governments. Uh, you've probably read about our experiences with South Euclid uh, Council. We have been before uh, the school board out there and, and the uh, Lenhurst Council, and they have been very supportive of some of the things that we have done. We've been called into the schools to put on racial sensitivity uh, training. Uh, we have made some points that I think they can understand. There is a reluctance on their part to take an initial step to, uh, to move in this direction, but at least they understand the consequences of not moving that thing. We provide tours to prospective buyers. Any black that wants to look around the community, we're not in the real estate business, but we do show the amenities, the, amenities, the schools, the recreation, um, transportation, all these things uh, we make available to the, uh, we show to the black buyers. I'll start with this one. We advertise in the community, we say, uh, there are some ads in the paper that we have where we have a black couple saying, you know about the Heights area, but have you thought of the other Heights? They too have good schools, good transportation, good housing and everything else. We have PSAs on TV, public service announcements. Uh, we have no control over when they're shown. They're free. Uh, my understanding is they're mostly shown two or three o'clock in the morning, but um, we like to think that maybe insomniacs buy houses too. I don't know. <laughs> then we have financial incentives. Uh, because of all of the, the negative influences that, that, that I mentioned to you before, uh, you need some really positive uh, affirmative marketing techniques to, to counterbalance what's gone on before. 
Another program closely linked to the Escock philosophy is the Fund for the Future of Shaker Heights. Mayor Steve Alfred explains. A method of providing financial incentives for pro-integrated moves. It's the opposite side of what Dr. Ritchie was referring to in terms of trying to bring black families into Hillcrest. Uh, this program is essentially trying to bring uh, white families into areas that have a, a fair number of black families already living them, in them in Shaker Heights, uh, and to some extent uh, doing the same for black families in areas that have very few black families in, in Shaker. Uh, we have been providing loans similar to what Dr. Ritchie referred to. Um, and that has been in existence now for a little bit less than one year. Uh, prior to that, we were in the, in the fundraising mode. We too went to the Clavin Foundation and the George Gunn Foundation, found them very receptive to what we are trying to do here in Shaker Heights. Uh, they made a challenge grant to us of $100,000 and said, we'll give you that much money if you can go out and raise within your own community 150,000. So we set out to do that. We got a very good response from our community. We have over 300 people, most of, almost all of them in Shaker, who made contributions. Not only did we reach our goal of, <clears throat> excuse me, 150,000, we went $35,000 over that. Uh, starting last May, we made our first loans. We have a target of making about 20 or so loans a year. So far, 18 loans have been made. There are three more in the hopper. We think they're having a very significant effect in trying to uh, bring additional white families into uh, Lomont and some of the other areas where we would like to, as uh, Dr. Ritchie said, beef up the white demand. Health care for the 80s, an important part of everyone's future. The City of Shaker Heights, in conjunction with the Senior Adult Office, the Shaker Heights PTAs, and the Shaker Heights Youth Center, sponsored a health fair at the Shaker Middle School here in April. Health Visions of the 80s was a community-sponsored health fair for the residents of Shaker Heights. Seven area hospitals participated in this event, volunteering their staffs and expertise. The Red Cross Bloodmobile set up shop in the middle school auditorium and found several Shaker volunteers. Kaiser Permanente Hospital brought the theatrical production Professor Bodywise, a production which uses puppets to explore children's health and safety issues. Mount Sinai Hospital highlighted some features of their new childbirth bed and gave some tips on how to take care of the newborn once he's brought home. University Hospital's Sports Medicine Division brought in the Force Soccer Team to give a soccer clinic and sign some autographs. The Health Education Museum donated their Family Fitness Center game, which was manned by Shaker Heights High School government students. St. Luke's Pediatric Unit allowed children the opportunity to listen to their own hearts. And Rainbow Babies and Children let the children dress up in surgical gowns and have their pictures taken. Metro General Hospital provided free lung function tests as part of their Airways National Research Project. There was a multitude of free tests and screening procedures available at Health Visions, from glaucoma testing, cataract screening, diabetes, Thai Sachs testing, to blood pressure and blood typing and anemia screening. Health center displays and demonstrations were abundant, and everyone seemed to take full advantage of all the activities offered. Shaker residents Teresa Gantos and Sherry Grossman were co-chairmen of Health Visions. I think I hope that everyone out there got a chance to come and see today's activities because it's really a, a wonderful, it's a wonderful community that we live in, and wonderful services that we are provided with uh, in a very short distance of being able to get to everything. Not only this project, but I hope that people will continue to go to 75th anniversary happenings around the city just to be part of the community. Last October, the Shaker Girl Scout troops left a lasting legacy to the city of Shaker Heights to enjoy every spring. 10,000 daffodil bulbs were planted to celebrate our 75 years as a city. This spring, we saw the fruits of their labor, a beautiful reminder this year and every year of Shaker's fine young people and their enthusiastic community service. A special thank you to the Shaker Heights Girl Scout troops and their leaders. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Shaker Life. 
Hope you'll join us every Wednesday. I'm Cynthia Kyle.